Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are speaking with Manny Pacheco of Forgotten Hollywood. Hi, guys. Hey, good to hey. see you. Manny. Yeah. We often talk about classic films with you. Mm -hmm. your, your knowledge of film goes way back to the beginning. But there was something in, in uh, a discussion that Art and I were having about action films. They, Films kind of changed in the in the what the eighties maybe, the, the the budgets got bigger, the the special effects got bigger. Action, action just changed. It was became more action, and it became more over the top. The car chases became more spectacular. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm of the the camp that likes a good script over you know a lot of eye candy and action and you know excitement. That said, I mean, I've always been a big fan of, of uh, Sylvester Stallone in his movies. Uh, not so much Arnold Schwarzenegger, although I have seen a few movies that I liked of his. Uh, of course, Liam Neeson has taken it to another level in the last uh, 20 years or so. Sure. I mean, action films are action films, and I, I have some favorites, but I have some not-so-obvious favorites. But before we get to those, I want to turn to art. I'm always putting the kibosh on art over the Bourne series, but this is right in your wheelhouse, mm -hmm. art. You can you can speak up and speak very uh, intelligently. Oh, hold on, hold on. Love of I'm Bourne. A, you you know I'm huge on Bourne, but I was huge on Blip. I was huge on the French Connection. Okay, uh, going all right. The subways. So okay. I mean those were they preceded, but Bourne it just seemed like uh, when Matt Damon uh, was in what the four of the five uh, that were made uh, with him in it, uh, they just took it to no. They were unrealistic to some extent. But they were pure action. I mean, they were great action. Anyway, I'm sorry. Okay, they were good. Well, you know what? And you make a good point. And and they did something else that I want to share with you. This is a little insight that I have, and and it's got and it's actual personal insight. Uh, growing up uh, in in the San Fernando Valley, as I did, uh, I would do a lot of uh, forensic and speech tournaments, and I would make a lot of friends from uh, students from other schools. And one one of those friends came out of Birmingham High School. I went to Van Nuys but out of Birmingham High School, and his name was Chris Rouse. And Chris Rouse, um, his father had won an Oscar for writing Pillow Talk. And I got yeah. to visit uh, his house one day, and it was the first time I'd ever seen an Oscar, and I was mesmerized. Wow, an Oscar, a real yeah. Oscar for Pillow Talk. A little did I know that years and years and years later, not only would Chris Rouse himself win an Oscar, but he would do it for doing something in action films that now become a, a standard. He pioneered a, cinem a cinematography thing that he won an Oscar for, and now they're doing it in most of these action films. And that is the handheld shaky camera as things are happening. Hmm. Blair Witch oh, Project yeah. did it. Uh, a few others did it, but he kind of did this for the Bourne series, and he won himself an Oscar for cinematography. He did it, wow. he also did it in the film Captain Phillips. Have you watched Tom Hanks and oh, Captain Phillips? Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of shaking going on because it's a lot of handhelds, yeah. and it adds to the it adds to the, uh, the 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 terror of the situation. Yeah. And that's a that's a Chris Rouse thing, and I'm proud to say that he was a childhood friend of mine. So so there oh, you go. Good. Congratulations. Yeah. And but, that's a you know what that is a great technique. I remember when that first came out. Right. I was a little nonplussed by it. What was the matter with the camera? Yes. And then you get you just get caught up in it. You get caught up in it. And you get, I got it's caught so up in it. Engrossing. Yeah. Well, you actually, guys, didn't the Blair the Blair Witch? Yes. Sort of the Blair was a first project. Is a good is a good example of that same technique that they probably saw in a Bourne movie and decided to you know steal it. <laughs> so yeah, but Chris Rouse kind of pioneered that that kind of action action uh, approach. Yep. And I don't I don't watch the Bourne series. I, I don't think I've ever seen one mm. one movie. Oh, but I did, but I did yeah, I know. I but I did see Captain Phillips and I did notice the technique and I was like, wow. Yeah. Well, right. I think it was also in the movie um I want to say Interstellar as well. I, that might have been Chris Rouse as well. But again, it's that same technique that's used that he's kind of known for. Yeah. And like you said, John, it's a love love hate thing. You either like it or you hate it. Well, yeah. so I, there I, was a, I, wasn't there a film like, with um I forget who it was with, I, uh, I want to say Nicolas Cage, where somebody did like a, a 15 minute uh, or a seven minute uh, a, a continuous, uh, somebody had held a study cam and they followed him through uh, uh, hallways. Uh, and That was Birdman and that, Birdman. Was Michael that was Michael Keaton. Right. Yeah. 
So I mean that that was that was taking it to an extreme. Yeah, that, that was taking to it was taking yeah. it to an extreme of different technique. That was hand yeah. totally, camera. Totally different yeah. technique. Yeah. yeah. And they would use it again in the movie 1917. Yeah, yeah. that's a different technique. It's just a long. It, it's that it appears to be a visual one take. It's not. Mm -hmm. But it, and you know who I'm gonna tell you who pioneered that. Just so you know, uh, Alfred Hitchcock in the movie Rope. Really? No that, kidding. Yeah, it, it's filmed in four series of play play shorts, and it's one long approach. And Hitchcock in Rope in 1948 actually um, that Birdman technique owes Hitchcock all yeah. of all of that. Wow. Now, as far as my personal action, I see action differently. I like to I see action as part of a device for a genre. So action can be used in horror films. It can be used in romance. It can be used in comedies. And two sure. of my favorite uh, action films that you might not think are action films, one's kind of a comedy, and that's The Taking of Pelham 123 with Walter Matthau and Robert Shaw. That's where, a comedy? Well, it is. Well, Walter Matthau, I mean, he's really funny in it. I think he's hilarious. I mean, the jokes, I mean, you got you got Jerry Stiller. He's not exactly what you call a dramatic actor. Sure. Robert Shaw is serious in the movie. And yes, it is an adventure of sorts. But, but as you know, they 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 hijack a, a, a subway. Mm -hmm. But what makes the movie is the real kind of a folksy and funny nature of of Walter Matthau. I mean, he's just you don't expect him to be a hero of this kind, and he is. Yeah. And it's an action hero because they have to save all of these poor souls that are that have been kidnapped from being killed off. Yeah. So I, I like that one. And the other action movie for me, and this one definitely is a comedy, Midnight Run. That wonderful mm -hmm. film with Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin. Oh yes. my gosh, that buddy, that buddy film yes. where they're trying yes. to get uh, Charles Grodin back to Los Angeles, and he's yes. being chased by the mafia, the mob. They're chasing him. The FBI yes. is chasing him, and they're doing all they can to get, you know, to get away from these folks. And of course, lots of people are getting killed, and people are being shot at, and there's car chases and crashes and. Somehow they always emerge unscathed. I don't even see a bruise on any of them. But boy, talk about <laughs> nonstop action, but nonstop laughs as well. That's yeah. a midnight run. I, I just absolutely love that film. There's one more that's a flat out, I mean, John Hughes, Ferris Bueller kind of comedy. And that's Adventures in Babysitting. Oh, I love that <laughs> movie. <laughs> Elizabeth Shue. Elizabeth Shue right. oh, trying to shepherd her, her kids back from the city. And that can be dangerous if you live in Chicago. What a <laughs> wonderful film that was. A family movie. Just uh, it was so humorous, so wonderful. That's a great choice. Yeah. And it was. They were they were on the run. They were they on the run. On the the run and all they were trying to do is get back home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They steal a Playboy uh, a magazine and everybody's after them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they just wanted to go back to the suburbs. That's it. It's all about the burbs. And yeah. I think that's a great action film. I, I don't I think action and comedy go well together. I think action for the sake of action doesn't do it for me. The Fast and Furious doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. But I think if you throw in a lot of humor, I mean, one of your favorites, John the Prince's Bride, in essence, is an action film. It's it's just a throwback to the adventures of Robin Hood, which is one of those great 1930s adventure sure. action films. So, sure. I mean, I, I don't see how comedy can't be a great companion to the action film. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. And your take on action films, I think, is right on the money. It's just not that... I think most of us are thinking more like the Bourne series, you know, car chases, shoot them up, fist fights, you know. I get it. I get it. But there's a lot of fist fighting in in, in Midnight Run. I no, but there was, also, there was also, I mean, we could go on for hours with this Saving Private Ryan. That's an uh, act. No, that's absolutely an action right. film. I agree with you on that. Done done very, very, very well. Any any war film is going to be considered action. I mean, oh, by nature, yeah. war is action. I mean, that's absolutely right. Saving Private Ryan is not a bad choice at all. Uh, help me remember... The Mel Gibson films where he was a cop and Danny Glover was his partner. Oh, <laughs> what, it was. There were four or five of them. I know. Yeah, they were. Yeah. You know what? They were. I love them. I love them. Everyone. The car chase got better and better. The buddy. Uh, the buddy. The buddies. Yeah, the buddies that they were. Yeah. I, that, know, there was one where he was sitting on a on his commode. 
And there was a there was a, a bomb in it. Yeah. How is it how is it that three guys growing yeah, up in yeah. that era can't come up with the one name of that movie? <laughs> but we, because we, we're trying to give our audience uh, uh, the ability to participate and well, to help us out. Good, we know yeah. this stuff. We know this good stuff. We haven't forgotten right anything. About that. <laughs> you know, the minute we say cut, we're done, we're going to all remember at the same time. You yeah. do, right. you do yeah. know. Right? Anyway, yeah. here's the action movies. They are great. And you're right. It's a much broader category than just shoot them ups and chase can I leave? For, can I leave you with one more thing, please? Sure. My next book, you know, you know, I've done Road to Forgotten Hollywood, Son of Forgotten Hollywood. You know, in honor of these movies that came out with the word "son" and, and "road to." Yeah. My fourth book in that series is going to be called "The Adventures of Forgotten Hollywood." Forgotten. Oh, that's History. good. <laughs> <laughs> A tribute to kind of those action films, I guess. That's good. You know, we need. I don't think we've ever talked about your third book. We'll have to do that soon. All right, you got it, and thank you for the uh, chat. And and well, but for the meantime, it's a wrap. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.